Kala the baboon's journey to motherhood had been anything but ordinary. As the time for her delivery approached, the sanctuary's veterinarians braced themselves for what might unfold. Knowing Kala's tumultuous past could complicate the birthing process. Dr. Emily Hanover, who had formed a special bond with Kala, stood vigilantly by her side. Offering words of encouragement amidst the tense atmosphere of the medical facility, hours stretched on, marked by Kala's labored breaths and the veterinarian's unwavering dedication, her body bore the scars of years spent enduring the harsh realities of the wild, compounded by the emotional trauma of losing her original family. With no support network among her peers, Kala faced the daunting task of laboring alone despite their experience. The veterinarians were taken aback by the unique challenges presented by Kala's delivery. Each passing minute heightened their concern as the labor persisted longer than anticipated, yet, amidst the uncertainty, Kala's determination remained steadfast. Finally, with a powerful push, Kala brought forth her first offspring, a healthy, black furred baboon, relief washed over the team as they welcomed the newborn with a mix of exhaustion and joy. However, their celebration was short-lived, in a sudden twist, Kala's distress intensified, her cries signaling that something was amiss. Dr. Emily's heart raced as she exchanged bewildered glances with her colleagues, realizing this was no ordinary situation. As Kala's anguish heightened, the team sprang into action, Preparing for the unexpected, in a dramatic turn, a second baby emerged, shocking everyone in the room. But this newborn was unlike anything they had seen before, its fur was a pale hue, a stark departure from the usual deep shades of its kind. The veterinarians, including Dr. Emily, were left speechless, grappling with the rarity of the situation amidst the chaos. Dr. Emily worked swiftly to soothe Kala while ensuring the safety of both newborns, with adrenaline coursing through their veins, the team faced the unexpected with determination and skill, ready to navigate the challenges that lay ahead for Kala and her extraordinary offspring. Albino animals are an extraordinary phenomenon in nature, with their complete lack of pigmentation making them stand out dramatically against the backdrop of their natural habitats. Among these rare creatures, albino primates are especially uncommon, representing a fascinating anomaly that captivates scientists and wildlife enthusiasts alike. It was with a deep understanding of baboon biology that the team of veterinarians approached their work, yet nothing could have prepared them for the astonishment they felt when, amid a hushed room filled with anticipation, a pale, almost ethereal baby baboon was born, closely followed by its twin. The soft glow of the room highlighted their unique appearance leaving Dr. Emily and her team enveloped in a whirlwind of emotions. Ranging from bewilderment to an overwhelming sense of wonder, the birth of these albino baboon twins not only marked a significant moment for the sanctuary, but also heralded the start of an extraordinary journey that promised to deepen their understanding of primate biology and conservation efforts, unbeknownst to them. These unique primates would catalyze events that would stretch the bounds of their dedication to conservation, uncover profound stories, and transform the lives of all involved. In the immediate aftermath, however, their attention was solely on Kala, the mother, and her fragile newborns. Given their delicate condition and Kala's exhaustive effort, the situation was precarious, yet there was hope that Kala's resilience would see them through this critical period. Kala's own history was a testament to survival against the odds. Her journey to the sanctuary had been fraught with challenges. Having navigated a landscape altered by human encroachment and survived the heartbreak of losing her original family to poachers feeding the illegal wildlife trade, these experiences had left her wary and isolated, struggling to connect with both her surroundings and those caring for her. The sanctuary, a refuge for animals on the edge of extinction due to habitat destruction, poaching, and human-animal conflicts, became her haven. Despite her initial resistance, Kala's story of resilience resonated with the sanctuary's mission, making her a symbol of hope and survival. It was under these circumstances that Dr. Emily was called upon, informed of the sanctuary's challenging new resident, intrigued and moved by Kala's story. Dr. Emily embraced the opportunity to make a difference, 
her expertise and compassion soon proving to be the key to unlocking Kala's trust. This breakthrough not only facilitated Kala's integration into the sanctuary, but also set the stage for the remarkable birth of the albino twins, highlighting the sanctuary's role as a crucial haven for endangered species and underscoring the importance of conservation efforts in preserving our planet's biodiversity as time passed. The relationship between DR, Emily, and Kala transcended caution, blossoming into a profound bond of trust. DR, Emily's gentle patience had gradually chipped away at Kala's tough exterior, revealing the vulnerable heart that lay beneath. Together, they had navigated a journey of healing and rehabilitation, forging a connection that became pivotal in Kala's evolution. Standing by Kala's side in the aftermath of her arduous labor, DR, Emily couldn't help but reflect on their shared journey. This delivery had been not just a physical trial but an emotional one for Kala, a testament to the challenges she had faced and conquered. Now, years later, they were ushering in a new generation of baboons, a symbol of hope and resilience, however, amidst the joy of new life. There lingered a sense of concern over Kala's well-being. Despite her incredible strength, she appeared unwell and weakened by the demanding birth. Dr. Emily's heart ached for her dear friend, who had already endured so much. Determined to help Kala overcome this latest trial, Dr. Emily resolved to devote herself to Kala's care. While her colleagues tended to the newborns, the baboon sanctuary, usually a haven of hope, now pulsed with tension as the veterinarians worked tirelessly to ensure the well-being of both Kala and her offspring. With each passing day, Dr. Emily's bond with Kala deepened, their shared experiences forging an unbreakable connection. Gradually, Kala's health began to improve, and she showed interest in her babies. While Charlie thrived under the sanctuary staff's attentive care, Luna's journey was more delicate. As an albino baby, Luna stood out amidst the lush greenery, a symbol of her uniqueness. However, her arrival brought unexpected challenges as she struggled to adapt and bond with Kala. Despite Dr. Emily's hopes for an immediate connection, the bond between mother and albino baby proved elusive, requiring patience and understanding to nurture. Dr. Emily watched over Kala and her newborn twins with a blend of empathy and concern. The arrival of the twins had ushered in a whirlwind of emotions, from the heights of joy to the depths of exhaustion. Kala's ambivalence was palpable. She was hesitant around the baby whose birth had nearly cost her life and struggled to accept Luna as her own, perplexed by the stark contrast in the color of their fur. As time progressed, Luna's challenges became more pronounced. Unlike her sibling, she found it difficult to nurse and lacked the vitality typical of young baboons. The sanctuary staff, deeply committed to their welfare, tirelessly sought ways to support Luna, understanding the precariousness of her situation, Dr. Emily, driven by a profound sense of responsibility towards Kala and her offspring, embarked on an exhaustive quest for knowledge about albino baboons. She discovered that these unique individuals faced heightened risks in the wild, their conspicuous lack of pigmentation making them prime targets for predators and potentially burdensome to their groups. This insight shed light on Kala's reluctance, the fear of losing her distinctive child to the dangers of their environment might be hindering her maternal bond. The gravity of Luna's plight was starkly illuminated one evening as her plaintive cries filled the sanctuary. Dr. Emily, moved by the sight of the frail albino baby, realized that Luna's struggles were emblematic of a larger struggle for survival, one that transcended the sanctuary's boundaries, sharing her findings with the staff. Dr. Emily catalyzed a deeper understanding of the significance of Luna's condition. They recognized that safeguarding her life was not merely a test of their medical expertise but a testament to their commitment to the conservation of baboon populations. Amidst their concerted efforts to nurture Luna, Dr. Emily's connection with Kala grew stronger. She devoted additional time to comforting and supporting the new mother, helping to alleviate her fears. With Dr. Emily's constant presence, Kala began to show signs of relief, a glimmer of resolve emerging in her gaze. 
It was as if Kala understood that under the vet's care, she and her little ones were in safe hands. As they persevered in the face of Luna's ongoing struggles, Dr. Emily uncovered tales of albino animals who had defied the odds in the wild. These stories of resilience and survival became beacons of hope fueling their determination to see Luna thrive. Through the challenges of nurturing Luna, the sanctuary staff, led by Dr. Emily's compassionate guidance, were not only fighting for the life of one extraordinary baboon but were also championing the cause of wildlife preservation, inspired by the belief in the possibility of overcoming even the most daunting odds. Dr. Emily's narratives stirred a renewed sense of hope and determination among the sanctuary staff, igniting a collective commitment to the well-being of their animal charges. Luna's journey, in particular, became emblematic of their dedication, serving as a testament to their unwavering resolve to ensure the animals thrived. Yet, despite their efforts, Luna's condition failed to improve as swiftly as hoped. Dr. Emily's intuition urged her to delve deeper, prompting a series of tests that revealed a heartbreaking truth. Luna's albinism wasn't merely a visual anomaly but a profound health challenge, her delicate skin proved hypersensitive to sunlight, subjecting her to painful burns even with brief exposure. Dr. Emily and her team realized the urgency of regulating Luna's time outdoors to prevent further harm. However, this new regimen brought its own form of suffering as Luna struggled to comprehend the sudden restrictions imposed upon her, compounding Luna's plight. Her compromised eyesight hindered her ability to navigate her surroundings with confidence, collaborating with experts. Dr. Emily saw innovative solutions to enhance Luna's quality of life, including specialized enclosures with UV protection and environmental adaptations. However, financial constraints limited their ability to implement these changes, forcing caretakers to resort to manual protection from the sun's rays and other environmental hazards. The challenges posed by Luna's unique health needs extended beyond the physical realm, casting a shadow of emotional strain over her mother, Kala, already fragile from the difficult birth. Kala's distress deepened as she witnessed Luna's struggles, caught in a delicate balancing act. Dr. Emily found herself torn between ensuring Luna and Kala received the specialized care they required and attending to the needs of the sanctuary's other inhabitants. Her unwavering dedication to the baboon family risked overshadowing the needs of other animals, prompting a sobering realization of the delicate equilibrium she must maintain. The sanctuary staff faced a daunting dilemma as they grappled with the best course of action for Luna's well-being amidst the sanctuary's broader goals. Should they prioritize Luna's safety by limiting her interactions with other baboons, or should they encourage her integration despite the challenges, fostering social bonds and enriching her life in sanctuaries like theirs? The natural order often dictates outcomes, even when they're painful, yet, in Luna's case, the staff couldn't bear to simply let nature take its course. As Luna's challenges became more apparent, they realized that her special needs demanded additional resources and attention. Drawing from her deep bond with both Kala and Luna, Dr. Emily devised a comprehensive care plan that addressed Luna's physical and emotional needs, with Kala serving as a beacon of inspiration. Dr. Emily's commitment to Luna's welfare only grew stronger laying the groundwork for Luna's journey of recovery, recognizing the importance of Luna's story beyond the sanctuary's confines. One dedicated worker, Maria, proposed a bold plan. She suggested leveraging social media to raise awareness about Luna's unique situation and the broader impact of deforestation on baboon habitats. Initially met with hesitation, Maria's proposal soon sparked hope among the team the sanctuary's social media campaign launched with a heartfelt plea for Luna's well-being, rallying support for the baboon species and their habitat. The response was overwhelming, with donations pouring in and resources offered from around the world. The community's outpouring of support exceeded all expectations, providing the sanctuary with the means to ensure Luna's survival and thriving with the resources garnered from the campaign. Luna's health began to improve significantly under Dr. Emily's meticulous care, 
innovative enclosures managed her sensitivity to sunlight, while tailored solutions addressed her vision challenges. Luna's resilience, akin to her mother's, emerged as a beacon of hope amidst the challenges they faced. As Luna's days turned into weeks, a heartwarming transformation unfolded within the baboon enclosure, thanks to the collective efforts of the sanctuary staff and the support of a global community. Luna's future looked brighter than ever before. Kala, who initially harbored hesitance and even distress towards Luna, underwent a remarkable transformation. Gradually, she extended her nurturing instincts to her fragile albino baby, shedding the protective shield that once enveloped her heart. The sanctuary staff watched in awe as Kala's interactions with Luna evolved, from cautious distance to tender cradling and gentle grooming. Luna, in turn, responded to her mother's touch with tentative trust, finding comfort and security in Kala's embrace. Dr. Emily marveled at this evolution, recognizing it as a testament to both Kala's resilience and Luna's inherent strength. As Luna's bond with Kala deepened, her interactions with her baboon peers also flourished. Emboldened by the support of her family, Luna engaged in playful pursuits with her companions, reflecting her growing confidence and sense of belonging. Meanwhile, Charlie and Luna's sister formed an extraordinary bond of their own, becoming inseparable companions. Luna's improved eyesight and manageable sensitivity to sunlight allowed her to interact more freely with her surroundings, further fostering her integration into the baboon community. The success of the social media campaign exceeded all expectations, garnering overwhelming support from around the world. This outpouring of financial and emotional support breathed new life into the sanctuary's mission, reaffirming the shared belief in the sanctity of all life. Luna's story became a catalyst for change, inspiring tangible improvements in the sanctuary's facilities and resources reflecting on Kala and Luna's inspiring journey. One can't help but be moved by their resilience and the transformative power of love and compassion. Their story serves as a reminder of the profound impact we can have when we come together to protect and nurture life in all its forms. As for the question of how one would react if their twin were albino, it would undoubtedly be a journey filled with challenges, but also with boundless love and acceptance. Share your thoughts with us in the comments after watching this story. What do you think of? Then there's an another story about baby baboon. Let's expect what will happen. Numerous individuals have proposed that the concept of motherly instinct transcends species boundaries and exists within the animal kingdom as well. Motherly instinct, often described as a mother's innate ability to understand and fulfill her offspring's needs, is a profound aspect of animal behavior. This narrative serves as a poignant illustration of this phenomenon, as it recounts the remarkable actions of a lioness when confronted with a baby baboon. Indeed, while love is widely acknowledged as a pervasive force in human relationships, the bond between mothers and their young in the wild is unparalleled amidst the constant threats and challenges posed by predators, it falls upon mothers to safeguard the well-being of their offspring. They selflessly prioritize their young's nourishment, sacrificing their own meals, and remain vigilant through the night to ward off potential dangers lurking in the darkness. Furthermore, they bear the weight of their babies until they are sufficiently equipped to navigate the world on their own. However, there are instances where circumstances render it impossible for a mother to maintain custody of her offspring. In a remarkable display of compassion and empathy, the lioness encountered an orphan baby baboon, defying expectations with her response. This extraordinary interaction was documented by Evan Schiller and Lisa Holdsworth, a couple passionate about wildlife photography, during their expedition in Africa. As devoted enthusiasts of big cats, they established their own organization, the Leo Chronicles, dedicated to raising awareness about the plight of these majestic creatures facing extinction. Their journey through Botswana's breathtaking landscapes spanned 16 days, during which they sought opportunities to capture the magnificence of big cats, guided by their local expert, who possessed invaluable insights into the region's wildlife. They anticipated witnessing awe-inspiring scenes, however, 
the encounter between the lioness and the baby baboon unfolded unexpectedly amidst their exploration of the 320,000-acre Salenda Reserve as they immersed themselves. In photographing the reserve's diverse wildlife, their attention was suddenly drawn to a commotion nearby. While observing hyenas and leopards from a distance, they found themselves surrounded by a sizable troop of 30 to 40 baboons, signaling the onset of an unforeseen and compelling chapter in their expedition. Amidst the chaos, the air was pierced by the distressed cries of a troop of baboons, their screams echoing as they desperately fled from an unseen threat, the urgency in their movements, and the sheer panic in their calls indicated they were escaping a predator, fighting for their very survival, Evan and Lisa, caught in a state of bewilderment and immobility, found themselves ensnared not by physical restraints but by the thick, metaphorical mud of confusion and shock. They stood frozen, mere spectators to the primal drama unfolding before them, as the baboons streaked past, seeking refuge in the dense foliage of the trees, their agitated forms disappearing into the green. Sanctuary, the couple exchanged looks of perplexity, silently questioning the cause of the baboon's frantic exodus. It wasn't long before the mystery unraveled itself, revealing a scenario far more intimidating and dangerous than they had anticipated. Emerging from their positions as silent observers, Evan and Lisa soon found themselves encircled by a new, formidable presence. The source of the baboon's terror materialized in the form of several lionesses, their sleek, powerful bodies and predatory gaze instantly clarifying the situation. The raw, untamed energy of the lionesses contrasted sharply with the previously observed panic of the baboons, painting a vivid picture of the harsh realities of life in the wild. Initially, only a pair of lionesses ventured from the tall grass, their focus locked on the fleeing baboons, however, they were quickly joined by additional members of their pride. A united front of feline prowess and determination intent on securing their next meal. Evan and Lisa watched, transfixed, as the natural drama of predator versus prey played out before them, witnessing a confrontation between the lionesses and the baboons that was both breathtaking and harrowing. In a desperate bid for survival, the baboons sought refuge in the trees, naively believing they had outmaneuvered their feline adversaries, yet, the lionesses proved to be relentless, their sharp claws making quick work of the tree's defenses, leaving the baboon's sanctuary compromised. And unstable, faced with dwindling options, three baboons made a daring decision to abandon their precarious perches and attempt a daring escape across the lioness-dominated landscape. Tragically, only two succeeded in their perilous journey to safety while the third fell victim to the unforgiving nature of their pursuers, as Evan and Lisa bore witness to this poignant moment of loss. They noticed a heart-wrenching detail amidst the tragedy, clutched to the abdomen of the baboon mother, a tiny infant baboon, no more than a month old, was ensnared in the cruel grip of fate. The scene underscored the brutal realities of the animal kingdom, where life and death dance perilously close and where survival often comes at a steep price. In the end, as they absorbed the lessons imparted by the wild, Evan and Lisa couldn't help but feel a profound sense of awe and respect for the resilience and raw beauty of nature, a reminder of the delicate balance that governs all life on Earth at that moment. As the realization dawned upon the baby baboon that its mother was no longer by its side, a profound sense of distress engulfed the young creature, left bereft of care and companionship, it found itself in a solitary plight. Yet, amidst the solitude, it wasn't only Evan and Lisa who took notice of the vulnerable infant clinging desperately to the baboon's abdomen. Despite the baby's futile attempts to seek refuge in the safety of another tree, its feeble strength thwarted its escape. Leaving it ensnared in a perilous predicament, it was during this struggle that the lioness, inadvertently responsible for the mother's demise, cast her gaze upon the orphan baby baboon, her expression betraying a perplexing mix of curiosity and bewilderment. Indeed, it seemed apparent that the lioness had never encountered a baby baboon before, adding a layer of intrigue to the unfolding drama. In the eyes of Evan and Lisa, accustomed to the harsh realities of nature, the lioness's eventual 
Intentions seemed all too predictable, they braced themselves for the inevitable, convinced that the lioness would succumb to her primal instincts and consume the defenseless baboon. Despite the baboon's frantic attempts to flee and vocalize its distress, the lioness's actions appeared to be that of a predator toying with its prey, a grim spectacle that threatened to conclude in tragedy, however, against all expectations, a remarkable turn of events was on the horizon, after engaging in a brief, yet intense game of cat and baboon, the lioness appeared to grow weary of the fleeting amusement, with a swift yet surprisingly gentle motion, she grasped the baby baboon in her jaws and deposited it onto the ground below her, positioning it precariously close to her own gaping maw, Evan and Lisa, bracing themselves for the heart-wrenching denouement prepared to divert their gaze from the impending scene of carnage, yet, fate had other plans in store, before the lioness could execute her final act, an unexpected intruder disrupted the macabre tableau. In a poignant display of solidarity and paternal instinct, the leader of the baboon tribe, recognizing the perilous situation, attempted to distract the lioness, allowing the baby's father to mount a daring rescue mission, as the desperate father stealthily maneuvered through the dense foliage in a bid to reclaim his offspring, Evan and Lisa bore witness to a rare and astonishing sight that defied the brutal logic of the wild, contrary to the anticipated panic and terror, the baby baboon. Nestled against the lioness's chest, exhibited an unexpected sense of serenity and security, in a poignant juxtaposition of primal instincts and unforeseen bonds, the baboon found solace in the warmth and shelter offered by the lioness's fur, transcending the boundaries of species and forging an unlikely connection amidst the unforgiving landscape of the African wilderness, however. The saga had not yet reached its conclusion, Evan and Lisa found themselves transfixed by the unfolding drama. Before them, despite the lioness's earlier display of mercy, allowing the baby baboon to seek solace against her chest after dispatching an adult member of the troop, the narrative took an even more remarkable turn in a gesture that defied the boundaries of predation and prey, the baby baboon, emboldened by a newfound sense of security took its comfort to unprecedented levels by initiating suckling at the lioness's chest, the sheer contrast between the diminutive baboon and the imposing 350-pound lioness, who remained remarkably calm and gentle throughout the encounter, rendered the scene truly extraordinary. In that moment, the lioness ceased to be a mere predator, she had become a nurturing figure, offering solace and sustenance to her unexpected companion Evan and Lisa. Observing this unlikely bond from a vantage point a few hundred meters away, were struck by a mixture of awe and unease. While they marveled at the lioness's unexpected tenderness towards the baboon, a lingering discomfort gnawed at their consciousness. This unease heightened when they realized that the lioness, having grown weary of the baboon's suckling, made the decision to depart from their location, gently lifting the baby in her jaws and moving on as the lioness retreated into the bush. She was soon confronted by a new set of visitors, male lions, drawn by the prospect of mating. However, the lioness, preoccupied with protecting her newfound charge, rebuffed their advances with determined resolve. Unbeknownst to her, this defensive stance unwittingly exposed her to a lurking threat, a momentary lapse that would soon be exploited by an unexpected interloper. Seizing the opportune moment, the baby baboon's father emerged from the shadows, swiftly reclaiming his offspring from the lioness's grasp. With a swift yet deliberate motion, he scooped up his child and fled to safety, his primal instincts propelling him to safeguard his progeny at any cost. Yet, in the unforgiving expanse of the wilderness, escape proved to be a fleeting illusion with the relentless sun bearing down upon them, the father and baby found themselves cornered in yet another precarious situation, seeking refuge in the scant shelter offered by a nearby tree, as tension mounted and the specter of danger loomed ever closer, Evan and Lisa watched with bated breath. Acutely aware of the perilous predicament confronting the imperiled duo amidst the harsh realities of the African savanna, upon realizing his error, the baboon patriarch understood the critical need to seek genuine safety for himself and his offspring, far from the looming threat of a lioness, with the utmost care and precision, he cradled his infant, 
trying to maneuver through various positions as he attempted to make his way down the tree. Despite several efforts, each descent was thwarted by the ever-vigilant lioness blocking their escape. However, fortune smiled upon them when the lioness, driven by the need to quench her thirst, left her post in search of water. This momentary lapse provided the baboon father and his baby a much-needed opportunity to escape their precarious situation. They seized it, finally tasting the sweet freedom they had longed for, Evan and Lisa, witnesses to this extraordinary saga, were left in awe. The remarkable survival story unfolding right before their eyes was something they knew would etch itself in their memories forever. Yet, it also posed a complex dilemma regarding the true nature of the interaction they had just observed. While the lioness had initially displayed a fierce predatory instinct in her pursuit and the subsequent killing of the baby baboon's mother, her behavior took a surprising turn when she discovered the presence of the baby, displaying what seemed like genuine compassion. She spared the infant's life. This incident left Evan and Lisa pondering as they concluded their journey in Botswana. Their adventure on the reserve had come to an end, but the memories end. Questions it sparked would linger, though they could not ascertain the fate of the baby baboon or confirm its survival post-encounter. They were touched by the lioness's unexpected show of empathy towards a vulnerable creature not of her own species. This unique encounter led them to wonder about the nature of maternal instincts and kindness within the animal kingdom. Was the lioness's action a rare glimpse into a universal motherly affection transcending species, or merely a spontaneous act of mercy? As we reflect on this story, we invite you to share your thoughts and feelings. After watching this story, how do you feel? Then there's an another story. Let's continue. As we delve deeper into the intricate tapestry of the animal kingdom, it becomes increasingly apparent that the lines separating human traits from those of our closest relatives chimpanzees and bonobos, grows ever more blurred. These primates, in many ways, mirror our own behaviors with astonishing fidelity, displaying tool use, self-awareness, complex social structures, and even engaging in conflict akin to warfare. Indeed, the spectrum of both our virtues and vices finds reflection in their actions leaving us to ponder whether there exists any aspect of humanity wholly unique unto itself. Traditionally, some might argue that our mastery of fire and the art of cooking stand as unequivocally human endeavors, beyond the reach of any other creature. However, such assumptions are swiftly dispelled upon. Encountering the remarkable abilities of a non-human primate, a male bonobo named Kanzi, who not only exhibits the capacity to kindle his own fires but also demonstrates culinary prowess, among a host of other remarkable talents, further eroding the perceived barriers that separate us from our animal counterparts. Kanzi's story unfolds against the backdrop of Yorkie's field station at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, where he was born in 1980. His early years were marked by an unconventional and tumultuous upbringing as he was forcibly separated from his mother by another female of the group, Matata, the group's chief leader. Under Matata's care, Kanzi's extraordinary abilities would soon come to light, setting the stage for a journey into the realms of cognition and communication that would challenge conventional notions of human exceptionalism. Transplanted to the Ape Cognition and Conservation Initiative, ACCI, formerly known as the Great Ape Trust, in Des Moines, Iowa, Kanzi found himself in the midst of groundbreaking research aimed at unraveling the mysteries of primate intelligence. At the heart of this endeavor lay an experiment designed to teach Matata language through the use of lexigrams, symbols corresponding to objects or concepts. Despite the arduous efforts invested in Matata's linguistic education, progress proved elusive, with the bonobo struggling to grasp the ten words researchers sought to impart amidst these sessions. Kanzi, seemingly disinterested in the proceedings, would often retreat into his own world. Yet, it was during one such interval, in a moment of spontaneous revelation, that Kanzi astounded all present. Seizing the opportunity presented by Matata's absence, he approached the lexigram keyboard and effortlessly began utilizing the ten symbols that had eluded his adoptive mother's comprehension. The researchers were left dumbfounded. 
for not only had Kanzi demonstrated an unprecedented aptitude for language among bonobos, but he had done so without any formal instruction, his proficiency. Emerging through naturalistic observation and innate ability in this extraordinary tale of interspecies communication and cognitive prowess, Kanzi emerges as a testament to the boundless capacity of the animal mind, challenging preconceived notions of human uniqueness and inviting us to reconsider our place within the rich tapestry of life on Earth through sheer observation and innate intelligence. Kanzi rapidly expanded his lexigram vocabulary, mastering over 200 symbols with remarkable proficiency. His comprehension of spoken words was equally impressive, rivaling or even surpassing that of a typical two-year-old human child, Dr. Sue Savage Rumbaugh, one of the primary researchers working with Kanzi, attested to his exceptional linguistic abilities noting his capacity to grasp individual spoken words and comprehend complex commands with astonishing accuracy, illustrating Kanzi's adeptness at following instructions, Savage Rumbaugh recounted an experiment in which he was tasked with retrieving a specific object from a designated location, even when presented with competing options nearby, for instance, if instructed to fetch a carrot from the microwave despite one being already present nearby, Kanzi would dutifully comply, exhibiting a level of comprehension and problem-solving ability that rivaled human toddlers. In a groundbreaking experiment involving 600 spoken instructions, Kanzi demonstrated an impressive success rate of 74%, outperforming a two-year-old child who achieved only 65% accuracy. Presently, Kanzi's vocabulary encompasses over 3,000 spoken words, and he can express close to 500 words by selecting corresponding lexigrams, an extraordinary feat that underscores his linguistic prowess, yet, Kanzi's talents extend far beyond his linguistic abilities. He independently acquired proficiency in American Sign Language by observing videos featuring the renowned signing gorilla, Coco. Additionally, Kanzi showcased exceptional toolmaking skills, reminiscent of early human ancestors, in an experiment requiring him to fashion a sharp tool from a stone to extract food from a box entwined with rope, Kanzi not only mastered the technique but also devised his own innovative method of stone flaking, defying conventional expectations and impressing researchers. However, Kanzi's repertoire of skills was destined to astonish even further, displaying a level of ingenuity unparalleled among primates. Kanzi exhibited the extraordinary ability to start fires, an accomplishment previously unseen in apes. Intriguingly, his fascination with the film, Quest for Fire, led him to request matches using sign language. Before long, Kanzi had mastered the art of fire making, assembling the necessary materials and kindling flames, a feat that defied conventional understanding of primate cognition and marked a paradigm shift in our understanding of animal intelligence. Kanzi's repertoire of remarkable talents didn't cease with fire starting. He ventured into culinary realms previously uncharted by non-human primates. In a groundbreaking display of ingenuity, Kanzi astonished researchers by exhibiting the ability to cook, an unprecedented feat in the annals of primate cognition. Sue Savage Rumbaugh, captivated by Kanzi's fascination with fire, recounted the pivotal moment when he embarked on his inaugural cooking endeavor, armed with a pan and kindled fires of his own creation, using matches he had requested through sign language. Kanzi began experimenting with cooking various foods, including vegetables, his adeptness at flipping ingredients within the pan, described by one researcher as eerie and remarkably human, underscored his mastery of culinary techniques far beyond expectations. What set Kanzi's culinary exploits apart was not merely his individual achievement, but his capacity to impart this knowledge to others. Notably his son, Tico, through observation and instruction, Kanzi passed down his culinary prowess, opening the door for further exploration among his bonobo peers. Indeed, the prospect of Kanzi sharing his culinary acumen with other bonobos hinted at a potential cultural transmission of cooking skills within the species, an unprecedented phenomenon in the animal kingdom. Interestingly,
Kansi's culinary aptitude echoed findings in chimpanzee populations, where a group in the Democratic Republic of Congo demonstrated a penchant for cooked food when presented with a cooking box, a rudimentary device that seemingly transformed raw food into cooked fare. The chimpanzees quickly grasped its function, adapting their behavior to accommodate this newfound culinary innovation. This revelation offered tantalizing insights into the evolutionary origins of cooking behavior and its profound impact on human development. Richard Wrangham, a prominent figure in biological anthropology, posited that the mastery of fire and cooking represented a pivotal evolutionary leap for early humans. This transformative innovation not only facilitated the consumption of a more diverse and nutrient-rich diet, but also fostered changes in social dynamics and brain development, a paradigm shift that reverberated throughout human history. Despite the remarkable parallels drawn between Kanzi's culinary prowess and human culinary evolution, he remains a singular enigma within the animal kingdom, a beacon of curiosity illuminating the mysteries of our shared past. His unprecedented ability to start fires and cook meals serves as a poignant reminder of our intertwined evolutionary journey, offering a glimpse into the transformative power of culinary innovation that forever altered the trajectory of our species.